Hey everybody, this is Casey Cease with Lucid Books, and I'm here today with one of our authors, Stephanie Smith. Stephanie Smith is the author of Watching God Work, and I'm really excited to have her share a little bit of her story and her journey of writing her book. Stephanie, how are you today? I'm great, thanks. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So why don't you take a few minutes and share just a little bit about yourself and what led you to ultimately write this book? Okay. So I am a missionary and a missionary's wife, 24 years, we have five children awesome. whom I have homeschooled, but we're down to just one kid in school now, so that's that burden is easing. Um, our ministry is a little bit different. Our goal is really to help other missionaries, to lift up their hands and encourage them on their journey and their way, and usually we do that through um, construction projects. My husband's a builder. Uh, sometimes we do that through teaching or he does preaching and music. But we have this opportunity to help write down the story of another missionary um, who happens to be my husband's aunt. Hmm. And she just had this phenomenal story and she wanted it shared, but she didn't know how to do it. So I got to help take up that burden for her and tell the story of how she served in Brazil for over 40 years among the Mogushi tribe of people. So that's how it all started. <laughs> that's awesome. So tell us, tell us a little bit about her story, some highlights that, that anyone watching as they go pick up your book, just think of it like a, uh, like a trailer to a movie or you know, some, of the, some of the highlights that, that can help, help these, these folks who are watching know uh, what, what to expect once they get your book. Okay. Um, Miriam Abbott is the missionary's name. She went to Brazil, actually to Guyana first, as a single 24-year-old young girl. Um, within the first year, there was a she had to endure. Mm. Um, the Lord moved her across there into Brazil, and she basically just lived with these Indian people to find out how they survive to mimic their lifestyle, but also to show them Christ, show them Jesus in her life. Um, they did not have a written language, so she helped them create a way to write their language. She taught them how to write and read their own language, and then she translated the Bible into their language. So um, she's phenomenal. You can imagine all the stories that go with that. <laughs> with, yeah. um, illness and epidemics and war and famine and all those things, but just seeing God work literally among these people. What was special for you as a missionary and, and how long have you and your husband and your family been on the mission field? We've been doing this type of ministry for about 21 years. Okay. So you've been in ministry for a while. You've seen God move yourself, but what was it like as a missionary capturing the story of another missionary? What was that like for you? Yeah, I tell you, for me, it was so encouraging, um, at least in my experience. We hear missionary stories about Hudson Taylor, David Livingston, people that lived quite a while ago, and their stories are powerful, but you don't hear a whole lot of modern-day missionary stories. And so it was encouraging for me to hear that God is still at work, that he, you know, his power has not diminished, his desire for souls has not changed, and that he will use anyone, a single missionary gal, or a married couple, or a child, or an old person, you know, whatever he wants to use, um, he will to accomplish his purposes. So this was, it focused my heart back on God and his great power. And I think that's such an important message, especially for those who sense a calling into giving their life to the mission field, that ultimately God takes mm -hmm. our yes and what little we bring to the table and he does what he does. And, and I think that's such a beautiful testimony, not only for you and your family, but also for your husband's aunt, that that there are amazing things and the perseverance throughout that has the thread of God's faithfulness through our own obedience. And I think that's so important. So. What was challenging for you in writing yeah. this book? You know, you're, you're writing someone else's story. Um, what did you find most challenging? Um, probably two things. One was just juggling 
my family life. Yeah. When I started this book, I still was homeschooling five. Wow. One of my five has special needs, mm -hmm. um, and so she takes a good bit of energy each day. Um, so just that aspect. And then secondly was the fact that I was telling Miriam's story. She actually had written letters to her mother um, almost daily, definitely times a week. Through those years, she was on the field, and Grandma kept all of them. So I had this enormous resource to try to condense down into just, you know, 300 pages or whatever. So just I had to leave out so much good stuff, but um, figuring out what was the most important thing to convey our message of God's faithfulness and power, that, that was hard. <laughs> I bet, yeah. No, I know I, a lot of our authors that we work with aren't like either retirees or single, you know, 20 somethings. They're people with families and work and ministry or business. And, and so what would be some advice you would give to someone who's working on their first project on finding the time to write? Yeah, this was my first big project too. So there was all of that learning curve to go with it. Um, boy, I guess the advice I would give is just stick to it. Don't give up. Um, it's worth losing a little bit of sleep. It's worth, you know, um, having to make tough choices sometimes for another. And um, I felt like sharing this story with the Christian community at large and, and even unsafe people, if they're willing to read it, they're going to hear about Jesus's gospel and the truth. To me, that felt like a worthy investment. And so if God's given you a message, it's worth the sacrifice to get it done. That's such a great point, Stephanie. I, I, I understand uh, from many of our authors and people who are considering writing a book that that when you get to the point where the message is is so deeply uh, within and, and the calling is so rich that people can make time or find time to to get after and, and write. And I, I've I've talked to so many people that say, you know, I, they imagine writing a book as you going off to a cabin somewhere and you're in isolation for two months and mm -hmm. and you write when reality is most of us who work on writing can find 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes a day to get some writing in and, and a little bit over a lot of time actually adds up. And so, I mean, and another interesting point that I think I would love to hear you talk about a little bit was you're writing someone else's story with a lot of documentation did you wait and do all the research first before you began writing to organize your research? Or is it something that you just utilize those resources along the way? Um, I did not do all the research first. I went to visit Aunt Miriam. We had a weekend together for me to just hear her heart and what she really wanted to portray. And then I just started working my way through those letters a little bit at a time. So I probably wrote... I'm going to say at least five times the amount of what is in the book now <laughs> Yeah. Um, because I just wasn't sure how it was going to go, but I got those thoughts out and then we went back and edited and we went back and edited again, you know, several times. And then I, I made another trip to visit with Miriam and Jane, um, her coworker, and they helped me edit, you know, what, what they felt was most important and, yeah, it was quite a process. <laughs> yeah, I, it's so funny over the years that we, we've been publishing at Lucid Books. We were talking actually recently with a, a new author who had never written a book. And we explained to him that it was a 16-phase process through the editing and publishing process. And what we mean is it's not 16 steps. It's 16 phases of of going through editing and revision and line edit and back and forth there and then in uh you know, the, the creation of the cover, the interior layout, the proofing, the, uh, all the work that goes into it, it's, it's, it's quite cumbersome. And for those who, um, who are first time authors, that's, um, that's, that's can be quite overwhelming. And so I'm sure there'll be a lot of people on here who have yet to publish a book. And that, since you were a first time author of a large project, what, what was your, what key advice would you give them besides don't give up? But, but as they're entering into the publishing process, what, what would you, what, what would, what piece of advice maybe do you wish you would have had before you got started? I guess my initial thought was that you have to be, you have to have some humility. <laughs> we all love our own story, the thing we want to tell, but um, 
being teachable is really important, especially your first time through something. You, you've got to get the experience and the wisdom from those who've been there before and done this to help you through those rough patches. And sometimes what you think is a really good section, they help you realize isn't all that necessary um, to the story overall. So having that heart of humility and being willing to learn from them. Um, and then I guess just someone to come alongside as Lucid Books did for me and say, we're gonna help you, we're gonna hold your hand through this. <laughs> and um, boy, I, you know, I had a lot of people say, why don't you just publish it yourself? It'd be so much easier. Well, it wouldn't be anywhere near the quality that it is because I don't know how to design a cover and we've already discussed my technological difficulties. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I needed, I needed someone with experience and, and you guys offered that graciously and a great great job so well, thank help. you thank Except you so much. all the help you can. <laughs> and that's what i what i tell folks is yes it is cheaper in some regards to publish on your own if you are a designer an editor a layout <laughs> editor because i've had more than one author who've had a very awkward family conversation with aunt mildred um or aunt janine who used to be an english professor but she took their writing from a 34-year-old male and made it sound like a 62-year-old woman. Uh, and that led to some awkward <laughs> conversations of having to adapt. because, And that's what we want to do at Lucid Books is come alongside and let people do what they're great at and free them up to, to pursue those in. So I really appreciate you taking the time to stop in, in, in your busy schedule to visit with us. Where can people find your book? Um, and it's called Watching God Work. Where can they find it and how can they connect with you online? Okay, so um, I have a website. It is simply trusting. And my Sim book is simply trusting. Is that what you said? Sorry, simply trusting. Weebly. Weebly. W e e b l y. Dot com. Awesome. Yeah, and then that has information about the book as well as our family and our ministry on it. So the book is available on Amazon. It's available at Barnes and Noble, and I just heard from you guys a week or so ago. It's also available on Walmart. It is. Dot yeah. com now. Um, so those are three great options right there. Awesome. Well, Stephanie, <laughs> thanks so much, and I look forward to connecting again soon. All right. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Oh, oh, oh.